Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, and we're going to be talking about the markets here uh, with uh, Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated. And we're going to take a look at what to expect in our ag commodity trade. It is post-election day here, Rich. Uh, just wondered if there will be any fallout from that as far as the uh, ag commodity trade. Yeah, that's actually a good question. As it stands right now, markets are really not giving us that much of a, of a big movement here as far as the overnight trade. Or expectations for prices on the open here today. Uh, looking at the U.S. dollar, for instance, we are trading a little bit lower in this one, which normally would give us a little support. And we are seeing some higher pricing on crude. So, if anything, maybe this dollar might be a bigger issue than the uh, than the election as far as direct movements on egg. Let's take a look at the dollar value, if we could, and uh, see what it is doing. And, and I understood that the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average was higher yesterday, and then it was lower early overnight but then rebounding toward morning. Right now, the dollar index is showing December futures down 410 points at 95.700. Now, I had heard overnight that it was down about 600 points or so, so it has come off of that a little bit, but still uh, quite a bit weaker on the day. The crude oil trade, too, we can uh, throw that in there. We have West Texas Intermediate crude, 46 cents higher at $62.67 per barrel. So uh, anyway, interesting market movement there. Overall, in the grain trade, we're looking forward to the USDA reports tomorrow. Uh, we'll get the crop production numbers. We will also get the uh, uh, supply and demand numbers. What's your going to be, or excuse me, what's going to be your go-to number first when you look at the report? You know, actually, for this one, we'll be looking at this number as far as the general discussion on soybeans, and we just really want to see what type of export cut USDA may see. Uh, as a reminder, USDA themselves are not looking at sales numbers; they're looking at shipments. And by both measurements, we are behind their hopes. But as far as these shipments, we're not that far. So we expect a moderate cut to exports here tomorrow on the soybeans. Let's go ahead and take a look at our overnight trade and get a feel for what may happen on the open here this morning. A little bit softer tone on the corn, still not doing much. December corn down three quarters. It was sent at 372 and a half per bushel. Meanwhile, on the soybean trade, it's been pretty quiet there too. Soybeans have been fractionally higher. Now they have turned mixed. Uh, we have November, which is in delivery up three quarters, but the January is unchanged at 884 and a quarter. This wheat market, Rich, um, it has showed signs of strength here this week. We have December Chicago wheat three quarters higher at 512 and three quarters this morning. And in the Kansas City market, we have the December contract unchanged at 508. Uh, could there be much impact in the reports regarding wheat this week? You know, there might be. As far as USDA, we don't really expect to make major changes on the U.S. side or with some of our competitors. Uh, maybe one newer thing out here on the overnight discussion is the fact that the Russian Ag Ministry, they did cut their wheat export forecast now down to 35 million tons. That puts them right at USDA's current level. So that might add a, a small amount of support here this next uh, day or two for wheat. Okay, we'll come back in a little bit, and I uh, can't wait to get your thoughts on that very active livestock trade that we saw yesterday. Cattle ended up mixed, but the lean hogs had an anchor tied to them at the end of the trading day, and we'll talk about that when we come back. We are pleased to be joined by Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. We want to focus now on this livestock trade. And as we wrapped up the day yesterday on the cattle market, Rich, we went mixed on the cattle market with uh, live cattle and feeder cattle having the nearby contract at least uh, a little bit higher at the end of the day. But the intermediate months were all lower on the cattle complex. We'll get to the hogs in a second. But uh, anyway, on the uh, cattle trade, some had uh, told me yesterday that they thought that may be evidence of maybe getting set up for this Goldman roll that happens. Uh, is that the case in your opinion? Uh, it's certainly might the case here, and, and I think also the uh, bearish discussion also is, brings, uh, is brought into light when you look at the supply discussion. You know, last week's scale was 643,000 head. That was the biggest here in about four weeks. So we don't expect these bigger kill levels, levels to last, but it was something which adds a small amount of pressure here. Okay, so uh, when you look at the opening calls this morning, I, I'm hearing rumblings of maybe a little bit, um, maybe a little bit weaker cash cattle trade out there in the plains. Uh, yesterday on a limited basis. I don't know if it's enough to really read a lot into that just yet, but is there kind of a weaker tone? 
You know, for the most part, I think that might be seen here. Uh, futures certainly are suggesting that we are done with the rally as far as the December futures contract right now. And we did see some very light trade we have in our, in our records right here in Iowa, uh, 113.75, so roughly 114. Uh, that might be just a little weaker than what someone to see for this, week, this week's discussion here. Okay, yesterday on the lean hog trade, when we got to the final bell, we had the nearby contract on the lean hogs going limit down, three bucks lower. The other months were not limit down, but not that far from it. Uh, they were in, in the high $2 range to the downside yesterday. Does that mean expanded limits across the board today? certainly does. So 450 lined up for all these contracts, and certainly the big driver for this move is going to be this week's supply. Uh, we didn't expect a 2.6 million head kill until the week before Thanksgiving, but looks like we're, uh, we will exceed it here on, uh, on this week's run here. What does that mean for the trade here? When you look at a, a technical pattern on the hogs, how much trouble are they in here? And that's actually a great point because on the on the charts, at least you do have a little more downside potential. In fact, uh, no support here lined up in these contracts until reaching down to fi uh, 52 or sub 52 on this D's. So a potential two dollars lower from here. Uh, do you uh, take a look at that and, and say that we have put in a double top? Is that a very bearish signal to you in the hogs? No, I think for ourselves, we've got to keep in mind this, the t this specific time frame, this November, very heavy supply time frame. Uh, I think we're going to hit, this hard, uh, hit these numbers hard this month, but then rebound a little bit here once we get into December. So for right now, I think short-term bearish is the rule, but I wouldn't get too, uh, too crazy here just yet. Interesting. Haven't heard any talk about uh, ASF or African swine fever yet this morning, but uh, yesterday we did identify there was, I believe, a 50th case in China. So they continue to uh, see that spread, and long-term, a lot of analysts are talking about uh, what that could mean to the hog market. Uh, Rich, thank you for weighing in on the trade here. Before we open things up, appreciate it, sir. We'll talk to you again soon. Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois.